time to finally assemble some parts of this lathe. So far I've made a few castings, but they aren't actually put together yet. I went through the painstaking casting and flattening of the lathe bed, uh, attaching the ways very carefully. I cast one of the bases, the feet, with my name stuck in it for purely vanity reasons. And today I'm going to like put them together. I'll actually have like the base onto which the rest of the lathe sits. But this is like part five in the series. So you already know what's up. If you if you don't, and this is your first video that you've seen this series, there's a link, click it, that'll take you to the beginning, you can get caught right up. Okay, out of the project already. Obviously one foot doesn't work unless you want a lathe that walks with a limp, so I cast another one. I didn't record that, but I used a different mold making setup. In the last video I used the two large mold forming tools. This time I grabbed the two small ones, just to see how that would work. Oh, and I used enough metal this time. Imagine that, it went a lot more smoothly. Patrons will get like a closer, nerdier look at the gating system. This casting came out much better than the other one. Not that the other one was bad, this one's just better. This ZA12 alloy is truly awesome. There's a link where you can get some of that down below too. I'm not actually gonna clean this up that much. I'm just gonna clean up where that bed sits on the ridge and anything sharp that might cut me even more than I'm already cut. I didn't attach the ways to the bed like Gingri shows in the book. And I'm going to change up a little bit how the feet are attached to. I'm not going to use a threaded rod and I don't have to tap anything. You know what? Just watch. You'll see how it works. First up, I need some holes. All right, fortunately I already marked where I'm going to put these drill bits. I think I marked those years ago when I was first trying to make this lathe. Let's hope past me's measurements were right, huh? I'm using two quarter inch by 20 countersunk bolts. They're three inches long, there's nuts and washers on the end. I don't want a bunch of slop, so I'm using a quarter inch drill bit here in my painfully tiny wobbly drill press. I don't want any slop, and yet I'm using that drill press. It's better than like freehand drilling it, right? Maybe? This metal drill is like super easy. It can gum up like files and grinding discs, but drill bits have no problem. The drill chews through half inches of the ZA12 is much easier than the quarter inch steel ways. It's very noticeable when you break through that layer. All right, let's see if I got that sized right. Sure looks like it. Yeah, the bolt's sticking up. It's It's got to be extra long because it has to go down into the next layer. Okay, to drill these bases, I have to kind of rig this thing up here. I want it to be sitting on here because this, this isn't bolted down and this is the only way to have it even remotely stable. It's not at all stable is I have this on the base. This thing can swivel off to the side, but there's just no way that's even remotely stiff enough. And I have to raise the other side up, put on this block of cherry here, put it on the other foot. And this foot here, this little raised section, actually works pretty well. You can hear it kind of drop down. Hear it drop down, and I can slide it to the side. And then it just hits the edge, and it's pretty stable right there. I'm gonna get this set up. I actually have the throw maximized on this thing to even reach. And I'm going to clamp this down. I don't really have any good work holding here, but I do have wood clamps. About as good as I'm gonna get. There, at least when it shakes, it shakes everything together. Right, that's what we're looking for. The tops of these bases are actually thicker than a half inch. All right, that's as far as it goes. That did not go through. Well, it got the hole started anyway. I used plenty of oil and went real slow on it, but I didn't really put any pressure on. With this drill press, I mean, I couldn't, I couldn't put much pressure on if I wanted to, right? But still, very nice drilling metal. That looks good. Fits right in there. Okay, next step is the countersink bit. Now last time I did this, you all told me that I was using way too much speed and that's what was giving me the horrendous demon screechy noises. I'm gonna try slowing it down. Of course, I have tried using this a little slower before and I run into the issue that this thing has no power. Not only is it not stiff and everything's wobbling, uh, it just, it doesn't have the beef. But we'll give it a shot here. I'll turn the speed way down. For the record, this is the lowest setting, but I'm gonna push real slow as to not just stop it entirely. It kinda helps. I was doing this part with noise-canceling earmuffs on and it was still painful. I kinda wanted to grab my noise-canceling earbuds and then like larger earmuffs to go over the top of that. It's seriously like nails on a chalkboard if those nails were attached to electric motors and there were a million of them. There we go, that's below the surface. It's a tiny burr on the top there, but it's definitely below the surface. Next! Countersing on the other side, here I actually started cranking the speed up in hopes that I could put like more pressure on without the bit stopping, it didn't work. But the drill press did start smelling a lot more like an electrical fire. So that's fun. All right, let's check the hole. Yep, slightly below the surface. That's pretty flush. Again, there's a slight burr there I'm gonna have to deal with. That's not a big deal though. Okay, admittedly that would have gone a little easier if I didn't have a very lightweight drill press from the 70s. And I know for a fact this drill press was a discard. This was returned 
to uh, Montgomery Wards for sucking so bad. And my dad, who worked at Montgomery Wards, uh, got to buy it super cheap and brought it home because he didn't care that it sucked. No, he, he was drilling balsa wood with it, so it, it was fine. I, I might be pushing it a little too hard. So I got the bolt in there. I went with stainless steel this time, not brass. Brass is cooler looking, but these have to be relatively, relatively tough. Here we go, got those sticking out. Here's the casting flaw from the, the there was an in gate there that I didn't cut off that just broke off of the hammer and it took a chunk out of there. Whoops, but that's how I know it's the back. And this one goes on this side. Man, look at that color difference. This was hit with a grinder months ago, and this was taken out of the sand yesterday, and I didn't grinder this at all. Look at that color difference. Well, we know it uh, it loses its brightness after a little while. We know that for sure. All right, I don't have like a boom camera mount or anything above, so I'm just gonna have to hold this and do this part one-handed. Oh, these are nylock. These are nylock nuts. I can't do this part one-handed. As soon as it starts to tighten, it's gonna catch. Hold on a sec. You can see what I'm going for, right? And this is a nice flat surface. This casting came out really nice. It's just that nylock is hitting, so I can't tighten it down unless I'm holding the other side. Look at how much extra clearance I had on that on that bolt. I had like one and a half turns. Those were the longest like flat top countersunk bolts I could find at the hardware store in stainless steel with a nut that they had in stock that actually fit. Sometimes you gotta make do. Oh well. Now look, and this, this one sits pretty flat. This one I can see a tiny bit of daylight under there. Oh, that might, that might be all the chips and junk it's sitting on. When I find out where I'm gonna set this and what's gonna go on, I might have to flatten that down. As it is, it doesn't really rock. I mean, it feels pretty stable. This foot's only touching on this side, but it's not like it's tilty. Of course, that's a bad sign because my bench isn't perfectly flat. So if this doesn't rock at all, this ain't flat either. I don't have perfect matchy-matchy edges here though. That's flush. Here the bed overhangs. Here the bed overhangs a ton. Here the bed overhangs a ton. The bed is much, much thicker than it needs to be though. So I'm sure I can, I can fix that later. Or continue not caring. Maybe I'll just do that. I assume it doesn't match perfectly because this I made out of a wood pattern years ago and this I made out of measurements that I took from the book, not from my wood pattern. And then, you know, casting, shrinkage, and pretty happy with that though, especially how nice the letters came out on both of these. And this one's not even cleaned up. Literally just brushed the sand off of it and flattened the top a bit. Even where the different parts of the pattern were, the, the inner inset thing was sticking up a little proud, so there is a tiny ridge there that you can see, but it's not, not much of one. Pretty happy with how well that fit. I mean, that's a, a proud ridge, so I could just sand that down and you would never tell. Kind of like how I did exactly that on this one. You can't see that ridge anymore over here. Man, cameras hate looking at shiny stuff in bright light. And here's the foundation of the lathe. Man, this thing is heavy. Ugh. Ugh. Or I need to work out. Don't answer which. It's just missing the lathe part. Right now it's just an extremely overbuilt shelf. Next time we'll get on to building the carriage. Uh, here's the one I made last time I tried making this lathe. Uh, and it's nice, but it's made out of inferior aluminum. Actually, it's not that nice. This, this could be a much better casting. Goes on here. Sorry this one's a bit short, but I didn't want to do all this off camera just in case someone was following along. I know a couple of you are. I didn't want to stick it in with like the loose piece casting. I thought that was enough for one video. And it has nothing to do with the carriage. So um, see you next time, I guess.